Welcome back, this is your man Warrior, and this is an in-depth character review of Shore Trooper. Shore Trooper is a dark side Empire tank, and he is definitely one of the top three tanks in the game. If I was to give it an overall Galaxy Star rating right now, I would say he's a Galaxy Star rating of five. There are only two out of the seven categories that I use to rate characters that he falls short on. One is his speed, and you can fix that through mods. And the second is accessibility, being able to get him. And that will change. As you know, Sunfac and, and Rex and General Grievous and a bunch of other people, uh, characters in the game that are really hard to get are now fully accessible through ship shipments and so they also bring them to nodes uh cantina nodes down the road things like that so they do eventually convert people to be farmable and if you're going to farm certain characters down the road you should definitely know whether they're worth it or not so if you're looking in for the quick what is he down and dirty is he good yes or no he is he's phenomenal he is one of the best tanks in the game so he is an empire tank who's going to enter the battle with a taunt he does heal his allies he also grants them critical hit immunity and he inflicts critical chance down for three turns on the other opponent which is pretty cool so he's preventing them from doing critical hits basically in two different ways very very cool so where do you find him currently he's only available in the data cards section so you'd have to buy data cards here if you go here they do have a temporary pack that's exclusively for him right here it says countdown to rogue one pack i did do a video on that and i do recommend it if you have him already and are trying to finish him off if you do not have shore yet this would be a very expensive option to get him now if you are a spender a whale a coiner whatever you want to call them then this would be the way to get shore and get him for about 300 dollars from scratch from nothing to a seven star really i recommend these packs for, uh, buying you know two three or four of them uh for somebody who's trying to finish off shore trooper the other way that you can get him is through these chromium mega packs or these chromium data card packs they have the capability of unlocking that character right there in the bottom middle and so you do have a chance to unlock him through those data card packs so that is where you get him. Now, for the purposes of this video, I was able to max out all of his attacks and abilities. I was able to max his gear out. I was able to put some decent mods on him, and I was able to get him to seven stars this morning. So for the purposes of this video, he is as good as a roasted turkey on Thanksgiving. Now, we know where to find him. Let's go ahead and go over his base stats. His power is around 9385 when maxed without mods. His speed's at 117. Now, his power at 9385 is uh, like fifth best in the game his speed is just slightly below average at the 117 mark his health is number one in the game at 29,844 now at gear 11 what are the gear needs for him so shore trooper is going to need the three I talk about are raid gear parts, gold parts, and purple parts. Those are really the most important and the hardest to get. The average for raid gear parts is about three and a half. He needs four. The average for gold parts on a character right now is about 220, and he is right at the average at 220. And at purple, the average is now 830, whereas he requires 1190. 1190 is on the high side, but at least it's on the high side of purple rather than it being on the high side of raid gear or gold. So for gearing, I would say overall he's about average with the exception he's going to take a few hundred more purple to get there. Now some kind of some fun statistics or fun facts on Shore Trooper as to why you'd want him is he is the number one rated character with the highest health in the game at 29,844 base health. So he's number one there. He's number three in protection. Um, he has 32,479 protection. So he's in the top three on both health and protection. He's in the number four slot for highest armor. Now, if you're a tank, armor is a big deal. And he has 324 armor. So he's the fourth highest armor. He's number seventh. He's actually tied for number seventh for highest health steal. Now, health steal is a big deal because health steal is 
let's go into it, is where he gains life for all the damage that he does. So health steal, 20%. It determines the amount of health restored based upon damage dealt. So we know that he's going to do damage and he's going to gain 20% of that. Now, he's not really known for doing damage and he's not going to be a big damage dealer for you, but the extra health steal is a big deal for sure. That helps him just stay in the fight longer. And he's also uh, number 10 for potency. Now, why that is important that he's in the top 10 list. I mean, we have almost 100 characters, so he's in the top 10 percentile for potency. And the reason why that's important is his base uh, his basic attack target weapons requires uh, potency to inflict that critical chance down for three turns. Uh, now his base potency without any mods is right at about 47%. Now I don't have him totally and completely modded exactly how I would like him to be modded, uh, but we will go ahead and go through um, his abilities, attacks and abilities, and then I'll go through mods and show you his stats. So the first ability is called target weapons. Target weapons says, and this is at its maximum ability, it's a basic. It says it deals physical damage to a target enemy with a 70% chance to inflict critical chance down. Now, why this is important is this is a basic. It means every time he shoots, he's going to possibly inflict that critical chance down. And we know the current meta is pretty high on critical chance or critical damage. And so when the other characters are doing a lot of critical damage, putting critical chance down for three turns on them pretty much nullifies their ability to hit with that critical damage. And that's the idea here. He's going to shoot on his basic. So you want to make sure that you're targeting the characters who do critical damage. For example, Ray or Ayla Secura or uh, Wiggs Combo, anybody across the way, Lando, anyone who you're afraid of them doing a lot of damage. The AOE masters, the people who are the damage dealers who have high DPS, um, first order type pilot, people like that. So that is who you wanna target, you wanna shoot with the basic. Now you're not gonna do a whole lot of damage, maybe a couple thousand, but you're gonna hopefully inflict that critical chance down. And it's for three turns, which is probably gonna last the entire duration of the, uh, the battle. So the second ability, and it's a special, is called Regroup. Now this one is, oh, by the way, for target weapons, this ability is great in any team composition. If he's in any team, he is an asset. And this can be utilized as an ability in any team asset or any team composition. For Regroup, same thing. He can use this ability for any team composition that you make. He's going to be a phenomenal addition to any team. This is at its max ability, and it has a cooldown of four. Regroup is his taunt because he's a tank. So it does a couple of things. It is actually uh, two-in-one, which is amazing. It's a heal, kind of like a healer, and a taunt, like a tank. So all other allies, it's not particular, it's everyone else you have, recovers health equal to 24% of Shore Troopers max health. Now that would be like not a very good heal for a healer because some of the other healers like Varus and, and Luminara definitely heal for a significant amount more, but it is a heal nonetheless. And uh, they will gain critical hit immunity for two turns. Now, provided they don't have like buff immunity from B2 or someone like that, then they will in fact get this. This does apply to everybody, provided they don't have buff immunity over their head. And he will also gain taunt for two turns. So instantly when you use this ability, three things happen. Everybody gains life, everybody gets critical chance immunity, and he gains taunt for two turns, which makes him the target. And the nice thing is, is now when you're playing against other teams that have wigs, Landos, anybody like that that's going to do that, those mass AOE damage, that this is a di direct response to that to prevent your team from being just utterly and completely destroyed through those. Um, Jedi Knight Anakin has an AOE. Um, there's, you know, AOE stuns with with Emperor Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine. So there's a bunch of reasons why regroup is super important. Now, the really cool thing is it's a, it's a taunt for two that has a cooldown of four. That's actually pretty standard for tanks that taunt for two, that they have a, a, a cooldown of four. But he has a unique ability built in. It says whenever Shore Trooper loses a buff, reduce the cooldown by one. Now, there's a couple of really cool strategies here. One, he automatically taunts, right? That's a buff. That's considered a buff. And if they have Sunfac or anyone who's going to dispel, 
um, Plo Koon, anything like that. And they dispel that ability, or they have a B2, for example, and they use the B2 to dispel. It's going to reduce this special ability, and at minimum, it's going to reduce it down to three, and possibly more if you've been able to buff him up more. Now, if you were to throw him into a rebel composition, uh, or, or any of the light side character teams where they do lots of buffs, Baze Malbus, uh, Chirrut, any of them where there's tons of, you know, health over time and things like that, you could literally get this to go off almost every single turn, if they were using someone like a B2 or, or, or you know, a Dispeller like Sunfac and taking away all of your your uh, cooled or all of your uh, buffs. So this is a really, really cool work in. They basically put that in there to prevent people from targeting him and taking off his buffs. And if they do, they just end up making it worse on themselves. Um, and it basically makes this a more usable ability. So that's very, very cool. The next ability is called Stand Guard. It is a unique, it is maxed out for this video. And it, at the start of each encounter, that means at the start of the battle. Now, each encounter could be something different in an arena battle. It's just the, it's one time at the beginning of the battle. But if you are doing anything where there's three rounds, like, um, you know, cantina battles, or if you're doing mod battles and there's five rounds, um, it will be each round, so each encounter, each round, that he is going to get that taunt, and he's going to take the heat off the rest of your team. Uh, whenever another empire... This second ability, you really, for team comp, you really want to put him in an empire team to max him out. Now, he's great in any team composition, but if you really want to see him go an extra mile for your team, put him in an empire team. This is awesome. This is specifically for empire. It says whenever another empire unit uses a special ability, and every one of those empire units have at least one special ability. They have their basics, specials, uniques, maybe a leader ability, but like Emperor Palpatine has two specials. He has the one that he heals and puts offense up. Uh, I think that's called Let the Hate Flow. And then he also has the one where he shocks everybody. Um, and so that uh, and possibly stuns them all. So he's got a couple of specials. And so every time they use one of those special abilities, if, if Shore Trooper's taunting, and we know that he taunts at the beginning of the encounter, he also taunts through his um, you know, special ability, so he's more than likely going to be taunting, they will gain, meaning the other person who uses their special, Emperor Palpatine or your, or your TIE, pie, uh, TIE Fighter, things like that, they're going to gain turn meter, 15%, and then Shore Trooper is going to gain health, which he's a tank, so he's gaining health. So he has one of the highest health steals in the game. He's tied for seventh, so he's going to gain health off his basic. He's going to gain health. He's going to give, you know, health boost on his taunt, on his special ability, and any time that he's taunting and somebody else on his team that's Empire uses those special abilities, he's going to gain health there too. So he is a self-healing tank, much like Sunfac, which is very, very cool. And on his basic, the target weapons, it's kind of similar to Sunfac's unique, because on Sunfac's unique, um, anytime he counters, he has that chance of putting critical chance down. But Sunfax is for two turns, his is for three, and it's on his basic, not a counter chance. So, because the counter chance on Sunfac is 50%. So that are the abilities. These are pretty amazing. You definitely, if you want to max out every ability, want to do this in an Empire team. Now let's check out the mods. All right, so for his mods, the first thing I would recommend, because we got to think about what is his purpose, and that is how you mod him. And his purpose is to stick around as long as he possibly can and absorb as much of the damage for the battle as he can. And so health sets are really what I recommend you go with. If there were protection sets, I'd recommend that, but there, there is not. So I recommend for the mod sets, you do health. Now, I only was able to get two health sets mods uh, set bonuses, but uh, if you can get three, that would be optimal because you would get another set bonus of health, um, which would make him even stronger. But the way I wanted to mod him, I needed to use a couple of random <laughs> mods to get him where I wanted. Um, the other thing that I didn't mod him for very well was speed, and I would recommend that. So for mods, your health sets, you want to do health sets are the best. Now your primary and secondary, you want to be able to do as as much health and protection as possible. Their protection is really the best bang for your buck on a tank, and you wanna keep him around so he can use, especially because he's slow, you want him to be able to use his taunt, his special ability. Um, and so if you can mod him to give him protection, health, speed, and then also potency, because of course he's trying to inflict negative status effects. Now he's naturally already um, not, you know, in the top 10 percentile for 
uh, potency, but you it does not hurt to get him over 50% potency by adding some with abilities. So the top left, the transmitter, of course, is always offense, but if you look, I did add uh, a mod that had 1800 protection. It had some potency and some speed. So this was a great mod for him because it fulfilled, you know, three out of the four things that I was trying to buff up. The middle left processor is always defense, but it did have another 775 protection and 337 health, and that is good as well, so I added that. The bottom left data bus um, is health or protection as your primary. I picked protection, of course. Um, I It has some additional potency as a secondary stat and protection, so both of those um, are really, really great. I wish this had some speed bonus on it. Um, that would have made this mod a little better. The top right receiver, the arrow, I did protection. Now, traditionally on this particular one, I would pick something else for the character, but this particular character, because I want to keep him around as long as possible, I chose protection. And you can see there is a little bit of protection in his secondary stat, although it would be nice if there was some speed secondaries in here or some health secondaries other than 0.8. I mean, 0.8% of health is negligible. Now the last two are not optimal. They're not a set bonus, uh, but they are uh, great for him. So first off, this one has protection. Again, normally I traditionally do not put protection in this slot, but for a very tanky tank, this is a great idea. It also gives them almost 4% potency and plus nine speed, which is awesome. And an additional 681 health. Again, my goal was to add his protection, health, speed, and potency. This knocks out the speed, health, potency, and protection all in one. So this was a really great mod. It's just a speed mod, unfortunately. So I lose out on one of my health set bonuses. And the bottom right um, is uh, normally I would probably put, you know, potency or tenacity. Potency wouldn't be a bad thing on him as you'd get 24 uh, percent more potency and that would be excellent for him to get another 24 potency. Um, but I went ahead and went with protection because I would rather him stick around longer and utilize his abilities than um, apply that effect on his basic you know, a little bit better. I would much rather have the extra protection. This one did have some um, offense, which is negligible, health, defense, and some uh, health again. The health at 1780 is actually a pretty nice uh, amount. Now, I wish this had a little bit of uh, potency or a little bit of speed. Speed would be nice to have on all of these as secondary stats because remember, he is slow. So now that you see how he's modded, let's go ahead and go back and just look at his stats so you can see where he's at. Of course, he's a tank, so his agility and tactics are negligible. They're kind of average. His strength is through the roof, though, at 1352. His health is not leveled up that much through mods. He's at 36,000, but his protection, I was able to pretty much double through the mods, which is excellent. That takes him from, you know, about 70,000-ish to over 100,000, which is exactly what our goal is. We wanted to get him over 100,000. He is my number one character now over Sunfac as far as overall total power at over 11,000 power, so that is pretty cool. His speed, I got up by 14, which is terrible because basically the average speed of a character is 130, and I was able to get him just to average through the mods. Um, so he's not gonna go a whole lot, which makes it even more important that he's tanky because he's not gonna be taking many turns in the battles. His potency was naturally high because he's got one of the highest potencies in the game, but I was able to add almost 7% more potency. Um, and his tenacity is naturally around a third, which isn't bad at all. His health steals at 20%. We talked about that earlier. Now, physical damage, his basic attack, is actually right in the middle. It's not in the top 10 or top 15 best damage, but it's also not in the bottom 30 or anything like that. So he his 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 base physical damage on his shot's pretty good. The problem is, is he doesn't crit a lot, so he's not going to do more than about 2,500 on any given shot. If he had critical um, chance up higher and um, you know his critical damage up a little higher, he would probably be uh, a pretty good hitter, but I, that is not how I focused on him. His armor penetration is 30. That's okay. His armor rate, we already talked about earlier, is um, his armor rate is number fourth in the game at 324. Um, so that's pretty good, and that's 38.61%. Um, and then, of course, for special offense and special survivability, the, both those stats go down, just like with anyone. So that is him. Why don't we take him for a quick test drive so you can see how he fares in the arena and through Empire Team Comps. 
So you can see that I am ranked number two. Number one is Penguin. He has a team with Sunfac and B2. We just discussed how B2 is kind of the bane <laughs> of Shore Trooper, but you might be able to see his um, ability reset or cool down be reduced because of the uh, removal of the buffs. And he's using Fives as a tank, Sunfac as a tank, Anakin as his DPS, and uh, of course Rex as the lead. And he actually has a higher arena power than me, but that is not what's important. What's important is synergy. And Sunfac and B2, or excuse me, Sunfac and Shore Trooper, both are gonna be able to put that critical chance down. So he's not gonna be doing a whole lot of damage as well as they're tanky and are gonna take a lot of the damage. And then of course I've got my wigs and Lando for the high DPS. So we'll just go ahead and go for Jedi Knight Anakin. He is truly their, uh, the biggest threat. A little AOE action will help take out Jedi Knight Anakin even though he has a tank. Kind of surprised my Sunfac has not retaliated. Um, he traditionally does quite a bit. Now, most people have buff immunity over their head. I have two people with buff immunity, but this um, taunt is going to go through because he does not have buff immunity over his head and he will heal everybody. So let's go ahead and do that. He heals, which they don't need, and he gives the people who don't have buff immunity that critical damage immunity. Let's finish him off. Now we'll move to B2, because he does kind of irritate me with adding the buff immunity over everybody's head. Throws a bit of a wrench inside of what we're trying to do. Sun fact, and I am going to actually put Rex offense down, then move back to Sun fact. There we go. Ooh. All right, let's finish Rex off with his shot. Actually, I want to show you his ability to put critical chance down let's do it on fives and it did not go through it does it 70 percent of the time let's go ahead and get rid of sunfac and i always leave fives till the end attacks and there you have it I have some other video footage of him I'd like to show you check this out
So what are your thoughts on Shore Trooper? What do you like? What do you not like? Um, tell me in the comments down below. Again, my overall star Galaxy Star rating is a five star. He's definitely in the top three best tanks ever. He works in many different great compositions from Empire teams, which are the best, but in any other team, he works great in every single area of the game. Tell me about your thoughts on this character down below in the comments. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.